Hi, everybody. Welcome to this new webinar. Today, we're pleased for the Bitcoin Montreal Meetup community to have uh, Elisabeth Prefontaine as a guest speaker. She has been working in fi traditional finance, but she now converted fully her career and passion to Bitcoin. And she was recently invited uh, to the Value of Bitcoin Conference, which is an esteemed conference uh, bringing a lot of people uh, in the Bitcoin industry. Uh, without paid sponsorship so it's only based on true expertise and opinion that people are invited so i asked elizabeth if she could present uh, the same presentation she did at the value of bitcoin conference and some extra insight um for the for the bitcoin montreal meetup community so i invite everybody to follow uh to continue the the, the video so you could hear elizabeth rant about some uh, old bankers and explain why Bitcoin is here to stay. Thank you very much. Why Bitcoin is uh, open banking. Um, I decided to, to treat that angle because for me, that's the intersection between my career in the legacy finance and in, in, in into Bitcoin. The, the, the common theme, the interconnection is uh, open banking. And I will uh, define open banking for um, to, just to give give some definitions it, it means essentially two things it means data access uh and it means set settlement uh if i if i focus on the the data access problem because it's a problem it means that the third party providers or fintech entrepreneurs um are not able to access the, the data that is uh, trapped in financial institutions i mean by that like uh, uh, for for bank accounts uh, for uh investment investment accounts so there's a um there's a data access problem uh, and the banks are uh, are in a very good position where they can block projects that don't serve their needs and you have to ask permission to offer a service to end customer so th the concept of open banking is to redefine who owns the data and uh, and i think that my my banking data is my my asset is not someone else's asset because I don't have a choice. To, I, I need to have a bank and I don't have a choice to have a bank and the data gets strapped in and I want transparency. I want access. I want to uh, be able to crunch numbers and services that, that would be available to me. Uh, uh, but banks have uh, a, a kill switch for innovations that don't suit their need, even though it's not for them, it's for the for the end customer. Uh, and there could th this could be solved easily with uh, a, a different type of credential credential management, uh, where you, um, uh, you don't want uh, you want to protect security. Uh, of non-transactional data, for example, to have a read-only password instead of a, a, of a, a password that access that the, the transactional aspect of the account. So I, I'll leave the, the data aspect uh, to it to focus on uh, now on the, the second one, which is uh, the, the settlement, uh, settlement between financial institutions. And I'm not only talking about the interbank transfers, I'm, I'm looking at it more more globally with uh, the security settlement. So in traditional and traditional banking, you have a settlement uh, with the T plus one, T plus two, T plus three. Uh, sometimes a settlement fails and T means like to, today plus one day, today plus two days. And, and uh, there's there are some inconsistencies in between institutions just in per per, juris, per jurisdiction. So the, the 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 settlement in between institution is 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 extremely long. And I uh, participated in, in roundtables where there are participants who would like that to be accelerated. So there's a, there's a greater um, there's greater. Uh, uh, execution more more efficient execution but this this can't happen so if if any one of you has tried to open or transfer an investment account in between institution it's 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 ridiculous like the number of the paperwork is insane and the, the transfer like it, it literally can take weeks to 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 complete so when i listen to when i look at what the Financial Stability Board is saying what the Bank of International Settlement is saying, what like uh, uh, OSFI here locally is saying. They don't want they don't want it to be uh, to, to settle too fast because it could weaken certain institutions. So there's they, they they want it to be they want it to be slow in a way, and they are also concerned about uh, tech giants joining uh, joining in, in banking because this would uh, erode the margin uh, margin protections. So where are we trying to contain innovation? 
need to protect margins because that that that, that to me sounds uh, like uh, price fixing um so uh, I think that innovation uh, in banking uh, per jurisdiction is stalled. Uh, and imagine all the regions in the world with their all different committees and all different roundtables. Like there's no global global framework. Uh, so the re re the reality is that in both case, data access or or settlement uh, from the point of view of open banking is uh, either permissioned or stalled. So to, to, to get to get permission, um, and I've seen, the, I've seen like to, to obtain a license to, to create because essentially what what it is uh, to, to to obtain that license to create, it's either you. I put it in three three bucket. Is either you have a, a a fintech that's completely inconsequential, like you're just gonna go nowhere and they and they don't even care about you so it's the, the inconsequential type the second one is the one that will be uh serving the the, the banks the banks the bank's needs so if as an entrepreneur i'm going to end up doing like service for the banks might as well work within the bank like the banks are going to fund the projects anyway and, and the third one is uh the, the third reason is when you're surfing the friendly narrative then you, then you get the, you get permission and i have a, a first story on that is that there was a uh a local um, ICO, like a, a shitcoin, a crypto cryptocurrency that was launched uh, locally. I won't name it, but they received regulatory permission. And why? Because they offered like this sustainable, good impact on 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 commerce. Really, it's a, it's a loyalty program, and it should have been developed as a as a loyalty program. But they used uh, the regulatory and the the, the green friendly narrative to um, uh, create a, a, something that that is a, that is a failure a, a, anyway. And you can't uh, so you, you you cannot uh, talk, talk about that. So why were they permissioned? Why was this project permission and and not the rest? So I'll uh, I'll leave, leave it at that. So open banking is stalled financial technology innovation is stalled in the legacy banking system because there's there's easy strategies to to implement um you make you make people go in circle you create round tables and discussion and stakeholders and blah 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 like it goes on for years literally for years i, I it, it, for, in canada there was a, a open banking discussion group where uh, independents entrepreneurs bankers uh and and the various stakeholders were, were discussed about that and then the conclusions were supposed to be released a year later now because of covid it's it's pushed out in time. What does COVID have to do with, with that anyway? Like it, it, it makes no sense, but the longer, farther out in time, but it, it stalls people. People can create, people can, can develop. So uh, it, takes, uh, it takes decades, you know, it's, it's, uh, so it's very frustrating and, uh, and like innovation will not happen in the, in the legacy system. Um, a, a second anecdote here in Canada, the regulators and the bankers have been discussing for nearly 20 years about fee transparency. Discussions, round table, pay, white papers, fee transparency, how much does it cost? Like it's not super, like it's not rocket science, like it's a formula. Like, and, and as, a, as a customer, I wanna know, yeah, what are the full fees? Stop hiding stuff. Why does it take 20 years, two decades to come around, to come around that? So uh, misaligned, misaligned incentive. And the third joke is when those meetings are conducted, there's uh, often someone uh, who uh, may have a few years to go before retirement who's gonna ask, what are all the potential use case to X? Really, like, like you, you, you think it's pertinent to have like all the potential use case to X. So it's just like buying time, making procedures because they're salary based. Like they're not, they're not the entrepreneurs. They're not. Uh, um, there's no, there's no incentivis incentivization, and there's no consequence in being wrong. So just, just go, just make them go in, in circle. So the first, so the, so the, the, the result is that the permissioned innovation will never work. Like it's innovation. You, you cannot ask permission to, to innovate. Uh, and this the second one is that the, the IT infrastructure of the, 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 the bank system is, is old, clunky, antiquated, and not, 
not suited for uh, the, the digital era in which in which we are. Like we're doing this this meetup. I don't know who you are, where you're from, what time is it where you are. Like we're about to be to be connected, but this this does not happen with uh, with uh, money. So it, 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 I think it's becoming uh, obsolete. Uh, but they have uh, strong uh, barriers to uh, barriers to entry, and they're using that. But ultimately, they forgot that they're serving the people and uh, they're not serving themselves. Right now they're serving themselves, preventing competition, preventing like preventing innovation, but they forgot that ultimately there's, it's, uh, it's serving the, the people. So, uh, but mon so to, to change that, money itself had to be reinvented. And that's what I, that's what I uh, think Bitcoin is about. Bitcoin is open banking for both the data access and the settlement. So in terms of data, remember that in open banking in the traditional system that there's the credential management and the, the centralized database and, and all that and access to data. Well, none of that exists in Bitcoin. There's no, there's no credentials. There's no user and password. You manage your own seed, but it's not a third party that, that manages, manages that for you. So it's a uh, open, transparent. The data is there. there. You don't need to ask permission to, you don't need to ask permission to, to use it, to consult the data and so on, so on and so forth. So, so the data is, 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 uh, and it's, it's a global, a uh, global framework, a global architecture. Um, uh, and, and from the settlement, uh, settlement level, uh, uh, block time of around 10 minutes and six confirmations for a large amount. Um, uh, if it, when the when the block time is, is around 10 minutes, it takes you to like 60 minutes for global settlement. I try try to beat that, um, and this is uh, that that's ex extremely uh, extremely fast. Um, so Bitcoin is open banking because you don't need to ask permission. It's opt in. It's a uh, 365, uh, 24, seven, um, it's borderless, neutral, uh, and it's based on, on mathematics. And uh, lots of people who don't know about Bitcoin, they think they, they only look at the, the price, but they don't understand that it's a protocol, a network and a currency that all has the name of, of Bitcoin. It's all it's all uh, all in. And, and uh, I think that's pure, pure innovation. Like the money itself had to be reinvented so that you could have like this global opt-in, uh, open, open banking and where innovators are, are able to create because then they're, they'll be stuck like going in circles. Innovators want to innovate and create, create new things. And, and I think that Bitcoin is, um, uh, uh for, for the same reason that it's open banking, bankers like just can't get their head around it. Um, so I'm going to now shift and say, why do traditional finance people uh, don't get Bitcoin? Uh, they, um, uh, I'll, I'll share several uh, several angle. Um, they, first of all, finance people operate on the second layer. They don't operate on the base layer and Bitcoin is a base layer. Money itself had to be reinvented. So they are comparing the, the wrong things. Like they compare Bitcoin is uh, slow in transactions. They compare it with Visa or MasterCard, but that's that's not that's not at all the right the right comparison. So that's the first. Um, they 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 have uh, in all the, the formal traditional education like you do. Uh, the, I I did a bachelor's degree and a master's degree, uh, uh, CFA, Kaya, and and uh, an ongoing education. They don't talk about the history of money. They don't present anything else than the, the, the current central banking. So there's no other theory that's just presented this way. So as a finance professional, I've never even questioned how money works, how money is created. Uh, they they are, uh, most, say, I say they, that's not, they are, of course, there's exceptions. Of course, um, but most of them have no conceptions of uh, hard versus soft money. Uh, they, they don't understand that uh, central banking essentially is fueling wealth inequality, that uh, the printing of money has, has fueled asset price, uh, which creates uh, distortion in the market, which creates uh, wealth disparity. They've never heard of the Cantillon effect, where you're closer to the money, money printing is where you make uh, um, the, the most money and and often in the money they forgot that the the deposit in the institutions it's it's my money it's my asset it is their debt and they treat my asset as their asset 
and and that's that they need to be reminded that deposits are a liability so uh, at another anecdote to, to demonstrate that they forget that it's our money, go to the bank and try to withdraw a, a, a certain amount of, uh, a substantial amount of cash. The teller who you've never seen in your life will ask, what is this for? Well, <laughs> my money, I worked for it, I paid my taxes and I have no other choice but to put it in the bank. And now when I want my money, you're gonna ask me what it is, what it is for? Like, uh, I, 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 it's like they, they forgot that they are, that, that, that it's a service to me not I'm not serving them like there's there's this report that's that's super strange um, now I, I I'll get out of the the, the banking of the moneyness uh, into into the trading aspect um, I was messed, completely uh, fascinated when I looked at Bitcoin in, in the sense of decomposing capital markets function where issuance transaction settlement clearing are are all in one. For in, in the traditional banking, it's all separate, separate function. In Bitcoin, it's 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 all in one. So it uh, it changes uh, the the notion of PNL, profit and loss, where you get your your PNL in in real time, three sixty four. Like there's no uh, delay, th there's no delay in settlement, the counterparty risk management, uh, the, uh, the the credit the credit embedded. So final settlement. Uh, that can be achieved within six confirmation for a fraction of the cost of uh, the current financial system. Um, and there's billions worth of tra transaction each day. So um, from, from a trading point of view, the PNL, like uh, remember when I said that the, 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 the financial, they don't want too fast settlement. Uh, well, this is, this is ultra fast settlement. Like um, um, then Regulation. Uh, another, the third reason why they have a, a difficulty to get their head around it is that the, the reg regulation is said, uh, oh, but we need regulation, regulation, but it is never questioned or held accountable. And and what I mean by that is that there are the, the rules in their system are broken over and over and over again, and there's no consequence. They just pay. They just pay fine, and I'll, I'll touch upon that a, a, a little later. Like, for example, uh, an anecdote: after 2008 financial crisis, there was the Dodd Frank regulation, which is probably that that thick. But there's um, a stress testing. The banks need to do a, a, a annual health check or this the stress testing. Well, the stress testing was suspended during COVID in 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 Europe. Why, why, why is that? Like the, the worst period where, yeah, you have like super stress, like real life stress testing, then by the regulation, it, they, they bend it, they suspend it, they, they, change, they change the rule, they constantly change the rule. And, and that's one thing with Bitcoin, the rules don't change because there are rules, but there are no rulers. And that's, that's, that's a big difference. So what's the value of a rule if you can bend it over and over and over again? Like there's no, there's no consistency. Uh, so I th uh, also that there are thousands of pages of regulation that could just be stripped away and replaced by lines of, lines of codes. So that means that there's a lot of regulators who are uh, uh, out of a job because not because it's, uh, because it can be very much simplified and there's a lot of the regulation that they put in that's just not needed in the in in the new ecosystem like they they make no they make no sense um because they they, they some of the regulation seems to it seeks to address behaviors that the first reg, the regulation created into place in the first place so they seek to address their own Anyway, so that's why we ended up with uh, tens of thousands of uh, various reg regulation and uh, side anecdote in Canada, like there's more regulatory bodies than there are financial institutions to choose from. Like there's, it's, like, it's, it's a bit ridiculous when you think about it. Like how many, how much, like too much regulation becomes complete, complete nonsense. Um, uh, and also that governance, they think governance in only one way. They don't think that governance can be uh, reputation based, can be arbitrated, arbitrated in, uh, in 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 different ways, like a consumer dispute uh, dispute merchant. Um, well, that's for regulation. Then for technology, uh, why bankers have difficulty understanding Bitcoin is uh, the I'm sorry, but the average age is I. So uh, they are not necessarily in touch with uh, the. The, the next the next the next generation and they don't want to shake the boat like if you are like a five six seven years away from retirement why 
why would you uh, make a, make a big change or take a risk or you just want to to serve this so uh, probably open source is probably an exotic an exotic term to them um, and they are being pitched the blockchain technology and they said so that that's my favorite when they say yes to blockchain technology but no to cryptocurrency and I yeah it's totally totally makes sense or when they say uh, yes to blockchain but no to bitcoin it's like okay like they, they don't understand that the the, the block the, it's a special data structure for for the specific use case of, of bitcoin and it cannot be stripped out otherwise it's a, it's a governance play and so so don't put the immutability and all all that you find in, in bitcoin into those those things but it is um, easy to consume and to repeat so they there's there's a lack there's a lack of of, of depth, um, and lastly in terms of technology I think that um, the the credit the, the a big problem that the financial institution have has to do with transactional uh, transaction transactional fraud I mean credit card fraud and debit card fraud and there's a identity if if the credential of uh, the people have been leaked uh, leaked in the financial institution and see there's um, what I'm trying to say is, if there's chargeback, like on credit card, on credit cards, then there, it opens the door to fraud, and then that fraud is is sent back in fees to consumer or fees to merchant. Like it's not absorbed by by financial institution. So the notion of chargeback is problematic, and where Bitcoin is um, interesting in that context, it operates like a clock. There, there's no Bitcoin goes goes ahead. And there's there's no chargeback possible. It's it's one way forward. Like it operates like a decentralized clock, and you cannot charge you cannot charge it back. So from a, a, a transactional and settlement and at, at many levels, um, this is a steep and steep improvement, and it fix it, and it fixes a, a, a problem that they have. But having that discussion is is a, is a almost not not possible. Um, Lastly, I will talk on. The, I will talk about the price. Uh, they focus only on price because they don't have the time to dig in, understanding how the the system operates, how the software operates, how it's all constructed. Because the reality is that they are in a rat race. They have uh, lots of things to do, and it's always produce more, 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 more of, of what they do, and they don't have time to to truly look at that. So they just repeat intent. They repeat constantly. Oh yeah, it's volatile. It's volatile. It's volatile. Well, look at look at what's going on in your market. Okay, Bitcoin is uh, the the price is 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 volatile because it's purely based on the the demand and offer, but it is the system is robust, the system is resilient, um, and there's no uh, there's no bailout, there's no more printing, there's no one to change the rules. So they need to compare like how how central banking is is operating, like they change a rule, create more money, debt. And and all these rule change versus this thing where you cannot uh, you cannot uh, change it. So um, and also in Bitcoin there's no hidden fees and there's no um, no one trailing a fee and that's a big that's a big revenue stream in the financial service industry and that's why they focus only on price because they are used to make money on money and uh, and in Bitcoin other than um, services operating with the legacy system and by that I specifically mean custodian and fund structure there's no fees there's no fees trailing on on Bitcoin and that is a, a, a big change versus the the price and how they make money on on money so um, I think it will be it will be difficult for a fin traditional financial people to to understand how Bitcoin profoundly transform their world and offers a, 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 an alternative and they will uh, the risk of losing out on, on a great on a great initiative and the younger ones like those who have another 20 30 40 years to work uh, I've, I've all interest in looking in looking into this and understanding how this this is a, a profound a profound change um, lastly I, I will conclude on on the when I look at financial institution, how they they do their marketing campaign, they say um, they they engage in marketing campaign like uh, um, diversity and inclusivity and um, uh, sustainability. Like they're good, they 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 are good people, but 
they don't truly really live uh, the um, the marketing claim. Like it's it's good. It looks good. It's a glossy. It's a glossy co co uh, coat, right? But but when you dig in, uh, it's not it's not true. And but Bitcoin um, is absolutely uh, diverse in the sense that you don't need to say we we're. we're <laughs> I, there's a, an anecdote for, for a financial institution. I saw that they they had a, this uh, marketing and they had a picture of um, physical type A, physical type B. I, I don't want to name them. And anything, everything was represented but the white male. Okay, and the and the marketing was uh, banking for all all people to everyone but the white male. I was like, okay, like if you need to say it, like it does not make sense. Bitcoin by design doesn't care if you are a blue dwarf with one leg. Doesn't doesn't care. It doesn't care of who you are, what you look, what you think. Like it, it is completely opt-in and and non-biased by by design. So so say diversity, inclusivity, uh, check. That's 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 um, that's that's by that's by design. Inclusivity. The banking ones, they say, oh, we have to be inclusive. Well, well, then tell me why 2 billion people on the planet don't have access to the banking system because they don't have the right paper. And they, they will not be able to have that those those credentials. With with Bitcoin, you don't need to ask permission. You don't need to have, have uh, proper papers. You don't need to open an account. You uh, just participate in, participate in the network. So again, by design, it is inclusive, diverse, inclusive. That's it. Um, and and the, the the last one sustainability, uh, which I um, if you look at how money is constructed, and I'll do it I'll do it quick. But if you look at how uh, fiat money is, is is based, it's it needs growth. It needs growth because it's based by debt, and to for it to function, it needs to grow. So cheap cheap money leads to cheap goods, and cheap goods leads to more, it's, 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 it constantly needs to repeat itself. Um, when, when you have hard money, uh, you, you think you want uh, durability, you don't, you want to take care, you want to invest on, on quality, it changes uh, the, the, the way we operate with, with money. In the fiat monetary system, you are disincentivized, you're not incentivized to have savings. You're incentivized to consume. You're incentivized to credit, and because it needs to grow, when you have uh, hard money and you are able to keep savings and that are not eroded by the the printing and the debasement and the seigniorage of of the currency of the currency, then you you take more uh, um, capital. The capital's decision that that you make are are much different, and you don't spend you, you don't spend on. Um, Things that that needs to you, you're much much more conscious about uh, about savings and consumption and how you deploy your capital because you're not penalized uh, by for having savings. So um, and and all while they push the, those marketing campaigns, uh, they 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 completely they, they call the Bitcoin a fraud. Oh, and by the way, you, see, you saw that J JP Morgan uh, is now the banker of. Um, uh, Gemini uh, and this is all there. So there, Gemini in the U.S. is a is a um, an, a Bitcoin a Bitcoin exchange. But but J, but J P Morgan, the the CEO, was saying, "Oh, Bitcoin is a fraud." And then few year, few years later, like he's the banker. Just 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 saying. But uh, they, the when the banker call, uh, they say, "Oh, Bitcoin is for a criminal and it's not regulated," and they say that as well. I went to look at um, a, a, a U.S. website. Uh, you can you can look for it yourself. It's a uh, Good Jobs First uh, Violation Tracker. If you put Violation Tracker in the in, in Google, you'll you'll find the site and you'll come to this the same data I'm showing. But since 2000, the five largest banks have, uh, in the U.S. have had total penalty penalties north of 175 billion, over 600 records of violation and abuses. Um, and just to put things in perspective, like Bitcoin's current market cap is 163 billion. So they've paid fines for 600 different cases, like breaching their own regulation. And they're going to tell me that Bitcoin is, is, is for criminal and, and, uh, and that it's not regulated. Well, I don't, I don't think it is, I don't think it is a, a fair, a fair, a fair assessment. So in, in conclusion, um, Bitcoin is open banking because you don't need to ask permission to access the, the 
the monetary database because that's 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 what it is bitcoin is a is a special type of, of database it's accessible to anyone and it is accessible to anyone but it is modifiable by no one um i think that bitcoin is the most ambitious and bold uh project out there uh it is the ultimate fintech um it is bitcoin is value over internet protocol um it does, it's not about replicating the legacy system. It's about creating, it's about replacing uh, for, for a better one, a better monetary standard and from an infrastructure standpoint. Um, so I would like to wish good luck to bankers and the various stakeholders who are going to go in, around in circle for years to come around open banking. And I also would like to ch wish good luck to jurisdiction who have uh, innovation ministry and economic development, because if you block innovators, you're not going to get you're not going to get economic development and i do think that the jurisdiction that will be open to innovators and without uh, without uh, um without uh, putting uh, roadblocks roadblocks into them will harvest the fruits of of that by having strong companies and innovators uh, on uh, under on, on their um territory Go back 25 years, okay? Imagine the, in Quebec, like, or, or in Quebec, I don't know for the rest of Canada, but the, we want to tax, like we, we say, oh, uh, GAFA is uh, changing media, has changed everything, is, 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 it has changed, so we need, to, we need to tax the tech giants. Well, what happened 20, 25 years ago? What were the, the decisions that led us to, to that? And now, now that they're not here, you, you're gonna pay like, um, um, Subvention, uh, what's called? You're, you're gonna offer them money to, to come here, the red carpet, you're gonna uh, uh, want to have taxes when initially, and if they were developed in the first place locally, then you would harvest the benefit of job creation, taxes, and, and so on, so on, so forth. So I'd say stop getting in your own way, uh, allow people to build, they want to develop stuff, uh, and the permission, asking permission is only going to make sure that the services are developed elsewhere. And you'll be served by uh, the tech giants of tomorrow, uh, or the, the the big companies of tomorrow, or the big service offering won't be won't be locally, uh, and that's 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 sad for the next for the next generation. Um, and about the, the last point on um, open banking is if you look at block height six twenty nine nine sixty six, a hundred a hundred. 830 million worth of US dollars moved for a fee of 8,000. Final settlement in six blocks. So good luck coming up with a more compelling proposition than that in the banking industry. Thank you. Uh, Elizabeth, thank you really for giving this presentation. We're so lucky to have like a such an eloquent voice especially with your background i, I see i see you like a, a bulldozer coming like to crush every, everybody so i just have a, a one question for you and then maybe a few questions from the audience so just just so they can uh, ask some questions so my question was in regards of since the regulators are going to be attacking bitcoin how how do you see uh like all the financial institution actively and aggressively trying to attack Bitcoin in any kind of way for the next, I, I would say five to 10 years. And how will Bitcoin respond to that? Well, to, to, to attack Bitcoin, you want to attack software? See, uh, see, if, if, we come back to, if we come back to what, what Bitcoin is, Bitcoin is not money, it replaces money. It's, it's a software, it's a database, it is a special type of, uh, of uh, data structure. So why should why should uh, you per be permission to to why should individuals have to ask permission to use to use a software that that does not make sense to me and that does and I I don't know from uh, from what and if they say if, uh, code is speech and if they want to breach speech because it's 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 that, that's what that's what it is like they have to go if I, uh, uh, um, chart of the Charte des Droits et Libertés, in fact, and and in the U.S., I also think it's protected by uh, by the Constitution because it's speech. So why Bitcoin is valuable is for 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 many reasons, but I'd say that it is not because it is money. It is a replacement of money. It is it is sp sp it's memory. It is space in a block. 
and and having a a, a bitcoin is um does one thing it allows you to sign message think about it like what, what angle does regulatory want, want to look at it what bitcoin does it allows you to sign a message to be included in a block so that the network um propagates it on the the public record that's that's all it does so why why sh should this be um uh th there's the, the angle and yeah they're they're gonna say they can but but the more the more they they try to do something against it the more they show how powerful it is so it it can have a counter a counter effect counter effect to that and really if i want to um uh you use a software i should not be permission to to use to use a software i hope it answers your question so so for for bitcoin it it, it uh, the, the jur some jurisdiction that are more open than others will be will be ahead of others uh, uh of other jurisdiction and i think that uh, they they may attempt they, they may attempt but it's not going to change anything to to bitcoin in the end because it will uh it's it th there's um the only people that will be penalized are the the citizens. That's that's really the 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 end customer because it won't change. Uh, they they cannot change or modify Bitcoin. That's an amazing response. So we just be taking maybe one or two questions from the audience. So anybody that wants to speak up, uh, don't be shy and just open uh, your mic and ask your question, uh, because I, I have seen a lot in the chat. But um, I think the one that people ask in, in, in real voice are uh, more valuable, yeah. Reza, would, would you like to have a question or? Yeah, hi Elizabeth, uh, this is René speaking. Uh, thank you very much for this enlightening presentation. One little question. In fact, the, the regulator is only really, uh, you know, able to intervene when fiat is involved. Once, once you're out of the fiat world and you're really on the, uh, on the, on the Bitcoin realm, there's not much the regulator can do at that point. You agree with that, or? I agree. I agree with that. I agree with that. It won't. It, it's not enforceable. Mm -hmm. It's not enforceable. And I and I think like, a, and it's important to to understand which what what regulators you're talking about because there's there's many uh, many 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 type of them, and uh, there's the and and say Bitcoin is not a security, so meaning um, not valeur mobilière. Uh, so it has nothing to do with securities uh, regulator. Like it, it, the SEC in the U.S. said it. It's not. It's not a security. So it's not. It's not in their regulatory. So there's say attempting to to regulate that is is if they're outside of their field of competence. Uh, but even even then, they they it's it, what they would do. They would not be able to uh, enforce it. And um, I, if we look at what happened in the in the Canadian uh, market uh, with the Quadriga, like there were many exchanges that went under, but I think that, that the Canadian know, know know about the Quadriga most. Um, this is not a prop. This is not a regulatory problem because it it is um, regulators are not able to prevent fraud or incompetence because fraud is already illegal in Canada. And, and incompetence, well, that's not, that's not something that's solved by, by regulation. What it is solved by is competition. It's solved by educating the customer and presenting a more compelling uh, value, value proposition and that it is not bureaucrats uh, in meetings, in weekly meetings that come up with those solutions. It, uh, uh, solutions are found by trials and errors uh, and, um, and, and, and education of the, of, the, of, the, of the customer. So are there ways to prevent quadriga? Absolutely, uh, but this this is not something that uh, can be imposed by by regulation because they don't know how to do it, and it's not their it's not their um, it's not their their ju their jurisdiction uh, anyway. So regulators may may attempt stuff, but it's not um, it won't be it won't be enforceable or even applicable. Hope it answers your question. Great. Yes. Uh, Le, Louis, so, do you, so you have a question about pension and capital gains. Do you want to speak up? I see. I saw in the chat. Yeah, I'm not sure. If, is my microphone on? Yes. yes. So we have been looking at uh, putting Bitcoin in the 
pension funds, our own personal pension. And uh, we spoke to a couple of different uh, funds. They didn't understand. They couldn't. It was very unclear. Uh, first of all, they didn't even know what Bitcoin was. And second of all, um, you know, they referred to their so-called legal departments, which came back and said, well, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not possible right now. So that was there to their what department? They, they just came back with an answer which was not clear, let's say. Okay. So, so the, my question is, do you have any information or knowledge about uh, transferring the existing assets we have in, in our pension funds to Bitcoin? And this is all with respect to protecting from capital gains. Okay, that like you're you're asking two 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 things. Just two things, yes. Well, when you when you say pension fund, are you talking about your individual R R S P, or you are talking about the pension fund of your employer, or you are you talking about a pension fund that you manage for 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 employees? Like, just give me more more information about the pension fund. The first one, individual. which your your individual R S P. Individual R S P that we can manage and control ourselves. Okay, got it. So it's so it's it's not the pension. But I understand the, the, the definition that you use. Um, you to to have uh, Bitcoin in your RRSP, which is the um, you, you need to have access to an investment fund that invests in Bitcoin, uh, and and that uh, unfortunately regulators are making two class of investors those that are already rich and the rest. So if you are already rich, which means if you are uh, an, accred an accredited investor, um, you are a qualified investor, you have access to uh, edge funds, uh, you have access to um, um, uh, uh, also uh, traditional, oh, sorry about that. You have access to traditional traditional funds that are eligible just for, uh, for them. Uh, so there are some that exist in, uh, there are some that exist in Canada. Uh, then there's one that was launched a, uh, 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 recently that is available to everyone on the secondary market. It's an equivalent of GBTC in the U.S., but for but for Canada. So you can do your your research. There's a Bitcoin fund that you can buy on the on the stock market that was recently launched in the, in Canada. So as far as the fiscal impact, because you are within an RRSP, if you sell title a to buy title b there's no fiscal impact because you are within within the rrsp so i invite you if you are an accredited investor look for funds that are um, uh, investing in investing in bitcoin if you are a non-accredited investor look at the, the closed end structure that you're going to pick up at a, most likely a premium on the secondary secondary market okay. and the reason and the reason why your banker don't talk about that uh, is because they're not they're not trained or incentivized to do because there's no there's no accountability on the way the portfolios are managed and they uh, and even and here's here's an, another anecdote that that fund that I'm talking about that's listed on the on the Toronto Stock Exchange now is a re is recent and it's a regulated product uh, I think it took them like three years to get to that regulated status uh, but yet banks can block distribution. So, which means that even though the product is regulated, banks are above regulators where they can't, uh, um, without any accountability, block product distribution. So, for many investment advisors, a compliance department prevent them from using instrument that could be good for clients' portfolio. And if you want to know more about that, come come on the octonomics.com and I'll uh, I'll share you some. Um, blog post and explain how the investment industry works but the but the, I, I think you'll be you'll be on, on on your own on that yeah okay we'll maybe uh contact you uh, because there's there's layers of detail below that but uh, thank you for your answer yeah so the, these were really great questions uh i know elizabeth has to go so uh, we thank thank you for your presence, and I just sent the the Octonomics newsletter in the chat. So I I advise everybody to subscribe. It's a really great one, and uh, Isabel gives a lot of information about Bitcoin, especially from her field. So thank thanks again, Elizabeth. That, that was really appreciated uh, from the Bitcoin Montreal community. So we hope to have you uh, 
anytime soon when you want. So uh, that, that was really nice. Do your, do your own research, educate yourself, be curious, don't take things at first value, develop a critical, critical thinking, keep on learning, 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 learning. And uh, yes, thank you for mentioning my newsletter. I write, uh, I write it on a, on a weekly basis and share uh, content I find pertinent uh, for, uh, and, and, and f like uh, I, I filtrate content I find pertinent and offer little weekly rants. Thank yeah. you. That was very nice. Thank you again. Thank so, you, everyone. Thank you. So thanks everybody. See you next time. We're gonna we, there's a meetup tomorrow about uh, privacy. So I advise everybody to join as well. So uh, for those who who are gonna be connected tomorrow, see you tomorrow. Thank you very much.